Welcome to St Andrews Park, your home of the FA Cup. In this episode I'll be reviewing back on the previous round, including some of the games, the goal of the round as, not, as voted onto the BBC, and all the scores I've got correct. The first game we shall look at was the first one to be played, which was on Friday night, as Haring A and Barra played AFC Wimbledon. As far as I know, this was the first time Haringey had, had made it anywhere near this stage. And for what, what they did, they've done their, uh, themselves proud. From getting to this stage all the way to their performance against League One Wimbledon. Now the players, they, the fans, or the manager, they... Pr a Wolf might feel they could have beaten Wimbledon with what the performance they gave, but I think the f the football club should be proud of of what the team has given out on the night. They ended up lose losing thanks to a late Mitchell Pinnock goal from AFC Wimbledon. And a, a specific standout from Haringey Borough was a goalkeeper, Valerie Pajetat. He performed wonders to keep AFC Wimbledon at bay and kept Haringey in the game for large periods. And also, massive credit goes to him. The next game we shall look at is it's the Saturday lunchtime kickoff between Maiden Edge United and Portsmouth. Maiden Edge United going into that game doing all right in the National League. When they came up against Portsmouth, they knew they were in for a toughie. Highest ranked team within in the round. And after losing 4-0, Portsmouth very much showed why they're at top and how good they really were. It did seem questionable beyond the beginning when Jaden Stockley hit at the bar in a close range effort. Should have gone in. But afterwards they made amends by scoring in four times four different players. And David Wheeler capped it off right towards the end. They're a no-nonsense team. And I think this Portsmouth could Will be the further, will go the farthest out of all the teams left in the tournament. Aldershot versus Bradford. This had a massive banana skin written all over it. Aldershot, okay in the National League, up against Bradford City, rock bottom of League One, at the pot, has to be the worst stage. And it, it, and it looked wet for hell from Aldershot in 12 minutes as Fowler got the opening goal. But Bradford City were able to save themselves by a 71st minute equaliser. Up next, Ebbsfleet United took on Cheltenham Town struggling in League 2. And Ebbsfleet, they were very good. I couldn't see a lot from Cheltenham in that game. It may have been 0-0. But if Ebbsfleet continue what they were doing in that game, they are right on course to cause the upset that they were hoping to do at home. But this time they'll go to Wadon Road in Cheltenham, which won't be easy, but as long as Ebbsfleet perform. So up next we've got Luton Town versus Wickham at Wanderers. So when I asked the Facebook group League One Massive on which games I, games I should preview ahead of round one. A couple of requests were Luton vs Wickham. Now I ended up abandoning that preview because I ended up, up have, not having enough to stay and stumbling on my words too much. So I decided to carry this over for the results. And having watched the highlights, I thought Luton were excellent. Showed why they he should have gone through and showed why they are currently about 5th, 6th in League 1. Henry Shinney and, and Harry Cormick's goals 
were the, were the goal scorers for Luton. And Harry Shinney's goal was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. On point. No chance for the Wickham Wanderers goalkeeper. Wickham had a close chance in the second half. Could have made it 1-1. But when Luton made it 2-0 towards the end, it, sh it kind of sh suggested who was going to be going into that next round. So I think if, if you're coming up against Luton in the FA Cup, you should be expecting a good game. Up next, Maidstone versus Macclesfield. One of the shocks of the round, or some people might even not even call it an upset because Macclesfield have just not adapted to life in League Two. What, but they did go in front about in the first half, seven, 21 minutes, something on them lines. But Maidstone equalised in the second half and then they got a penalty which they scored and ruined my 1-1 prediction. So, yeah, it's, Macclesfield could, you could say uh, more like a National League level because so if that is the case, then it's then you whether you call it a shock or not, that's that could be a debatable eight. But Maidstone have knocked out a League Two level team, and Maidstone are on their way to a to the next round. What could they pull off against League One Oldham? Another upset: Yeovil Town one, Stockport County three. Now, Yeovil yeah, went in front eight minutes in thanks to a goal from Alex Fisher. I believe Alex is his first name. But after that, the tide turned to Stockport's way as Matty Warburton scored a brilliant free kick to, equal, to level the game. And then towards the end, to really put the writing on the wall for Yeovil, one of the easiest goals possibly ever scored. A spe well, definitely in that round for sure as Stockport County wrapped up the win. Now Stockport go on to play potentially a League One side in Bristol Rovers, who have not been doing great, but who knows, perhaps more headlines are waiting for Stockport. Next I shall cover Geisley vs Cambridge United, third upset of the competition um, how did it go down Geisley went in front thanks to a brilliant goal then they went got another two and then Kingsley James fourth goal put the winning goal or made it the winning goal Cambridge United showed character by like, putting in three including a couple of late goals but they weren't enough to hold their hopes to progress as it as luck just went against them. Geisy will now oh, um, look up to another level as they play Joey Barton's Fleetwood having beaten Alfreton 4-1. So no nonsense from them as far as Fleetwood's concerned. Up next we've got Barnett versus Bristol Rovers. That game ended in a draw, 1-1. And Barnett were the better inside in the first half. Did well down that left side flank. Even got the opening goal, which was a well-taken header. When Daryl Clark changed things up in the first half, there was a progression. But in the first half, Bristol Rovers were still lacking in chance creations. As for the sending off, I think it was quite harsh. I probably might have said red card at the time from my distance, but there just wasn't a lot in it, to be honest. Unlucky Stuart Sinclair. Second half, Bristol Rovers were the better. Tom Nichols did well to win a penalty. First half, I'll just say he got booked because he, of the way he reacted to um, what the referee thought was a dive. To be honest, I'll have to look, look at it again, but stayed down. That, that was the ref's problem, I believe. 
Oh, but as for the second half, Chris Lyons' penalty saved Bristol Rovers. And three woodwork hits. Three times Bristol Rovers hit the woodwork. Including the inside of the post. Could have made things a lot more better. But I will be going to the replay ahead of what will be on Wednesday. And I'll be doing a vlog for that game. But on to the next game. Next we look at Port Vale versus Sunderland. Sunderland, first time I'm even, he's been at this stage since the 70s. Um, and they did quite well in, the, in this game. A Sunderland, as they started pretty well. Open, he's got a brilliant opening goal through George Honeymoon. And then Jaden Gooch, which made it 2-0. Tom Pope pulled a, pulled a goal back, making his eighth for the season in all competitions. And there's a was a huge talking point in that game when the Port Vale perhaps should have had a penalty. Having looked at it again, there were there was contact. That's for certain. Well, not certain, but the correct angle you do see contact. However, he was at at a at quite an angle, so that is sort of the uh, the other side you might find them to not give it and finally we look to Monday night's game where Hampton and Richmond took on Oldham Athletic and and it went and things went well for the non-league side as they, they won a penalty scored audit within six minutes but Oldham got back on their feet scored twice and it means an, another non-league away trip to Maidstone United and like the next round suggests, a level up means it's going to get harder. For Hampton and Richmond, again, an, an, a not a high rate, not a high radar, odd football club, but for what they did, they can also be proud of their efforts. Well, having covered what might have been a few many, a few too many games. The next thing I'm going to look at is the goal of the round. As voted by the fans on the BBC Sport website, the winner was Bruno Andre Ad's goal for, so, sorry for the name butcher, his goal for Lincoln City against Northampton Town. Which was a good goal, I'll give him that. But it's not really my pick. I'll just say that. I would have gone with Kane's goal, if I'm remembering the name correctly, against, against Doncaster Rovers for Chut Oli. I'll get it up just so I can get the facts completely right. But it was a top draw finish. And that got my vote when I went on to that section of the BBC Sport FA Cup website. FA Cup section. And finally, I'm going to tell you which, FA, which games from the FA Cup I got right. So I got five of the 40 correct. 40 games correct. Aldershot 1, Bradford 1. That was my one. That was one. Luton 2, Wickham 0. Morecambe nil, Halifax nil. Halifax done well to, to bring to earn a replay, although Morecambe was struggling. Shrewsbury won, Salford won, and Mansfield won, Chelsea won. So, what was your thoughts on the FA Cup up in the weekend? Whether it was from a game, a goal, anything at all, let me know. And if you want me to cover your team at any point within the series, do let me know and I should, oh, I'll be ha happy to do something for you. But in the meantime, it's goodbye from me.